from Keith Broughton. Is it morally right that five-year-old children learn about LGBT issues in school? Oh, I can hear all sorts of sounds coming from the audience here. So, um, Adem, I'm going to come to you first about this, actually. But uh, just to put this in context, uh, not only uh, yesterday did new government, new government regulations for relationships and sex education pass, you can tell us a, a bit more about that, but obviously there has been some controversy over schools in Birmingham uh, teaching uh, something called the No Outsiders programme about relationships and, um, and uh, in amongst that uh, same-sex relationships to children in primary school. Damien, I, I was trying to look up yeah. what your position on this was and I couldn't quite work it out. When it comes to teaching five-year-olds, six-year-olds about same-sex relationships, we're not talking sex education, but yeah. about same-sex relationships, and this is where some schools have had problems with parents who've objected. Do you support that? So, can I, can I just take one step well, back do you and don't say, you? no, because it's not that simple, a, you, you can't make all these questions into binary questions, they are complex questions uh, sometimes. I think it is right, we think it is right, and this is reflected in the new relationships and sex education and relationships education guidance that we passed in Parliament this week, that during the course of a child's schooling, um, they do discuss, they learn about... Um, uh, LGBT relationships as part of the diversity of our country. That is the that is the type of country we live in, where there are different types of relationships. It's legal to have same-sex marriage. You could have uh, another child in your class who has same-sex parents, and it is much safer to have a child have the opportunity to hear about that and discuss that in a safe environment at school from a teacher than it is to pick it up on the internet or just to hear what other kids are saying. So we've just updated relationships and sex education guidance, by the way, for the first time in 19 years. But so so, the, the so the surely the, the, the take-out from that is that, is that it, incredible. Is, it, is a, it, it is something that you would support for children in primary school. So there, there isn't a... So the way the, the way the guidance is set out, there's not a requirement to teach about particular matters, including about LGBT relationships at a particular age, because we trust teachers to make those to make those judgments. So as a, you know, I mentioned, there might be a child in the class who has a same sex couple uh, for as parents. If that's the case, then you probably do want to be discussing, uh, discussing Even at that this young quite. Age. Well, I'm not going to say at, at, at that particular age, but at an earlier age than, than than perhaps in another group and otherwise. But we do think that during the course of your schooling, um, it is important to have talked about that. By the way, this among many, many other, uh, other subjects, and I repeat again, you know, this is the first time we've updated in 19 years. Just think about the way the world has changed, and particularly the way the internet has changed everything. Changed the way we think about relationships, friendships. Think about, you know, how uh, young people's mental health uh, can be more affected now than it used to be. So I do think it's really important that we have brought this, uh, brought this up to date. Keith, does that answer your question? It does, in a way, but I, I think it's a lot too young. I don't think you Because you talked about five-year-olds. About... Yeah, at five-year-old, it's too young. I think it should maybe 10, 11, something like that, a little bit older, secondary school. I mean, I'm not clear the way you think that's too young or not, but I've had a good, good go at trying to get an answer from you. Jenny? Well, no, well, uh, is, is that I not No, I didn't answer. I said it depends. So I trust... So yes, I trust in certain the, circumstances. I trust then. the teacher and the head teacher in the school. In general, when we talk about relationships, education in primary school, generally speaking, that starts off with talking about friends and talking about family and community and talking about being kind to one another and taking turns. You're not talking about sort of romantic relationships at all at that well, stage. Well, families. But families. I tr including families. And, but I, then I trust trust, you know, teachers, the, the great people running our schools and taking lessons day in, day out, to make those judgments based on the cohort of children that they have in front of them. Jenny. I, I think it's quite important that this is happening and it's about time that we taught our children about healthy friendships and relationships and the fact that not everybody grows up in exactly the same um, family situation and that that's okay and that we are accepting. <laughs> I, I, I find it astonishing that we are um, only really just doing this now. Just under half of children who are LGBT report that they've been bullied at school for being LGBT. And part of that has to be because we allow ignorance and, and prejudice to, 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 to go unchallenged too often in schools. And that's going to stop. 
and I think that's the, a good thing. And I think part of the problem with parents, I don't like it when I see parents um, at odds with the child's school. I think that's, that's it's a very worrying thing. And what needs to happen is a, a proper conversation with those parents. They've got every right to know what their child yes. is being taught and to have those materials shared with them yes. and to have that talked through and to get all the reinsurances they need. And almost every time that happens, things calm down and it's fine. And I'm glad that this is happening. It's the right thing for our kids. The man in the front. I'm going to... If you wouldn't mind being reasonably brief, because I want to get round quite a few of you. The man in the front. I'm a Muslim. I follow the religion of Islam. Islam teaches us LGBT to a certain degree doesn't even exist. It's not even part of the faith. However, as an open society that we should be and are, we should be able to teach our children about all types of forms of, of relationships, who does what, when they do it, how they do it. Certainly, as Damien mentioned, the, the, the age difference and the age scenario, yes, we should maybe look very carefully at that, but it always seems to be, we seem to have the slums across the United Kingdom who seem to, for example, Park Hill School in, in the West Midlands, who seem to suddenly all want to go out and go on strike again over a, a, a matter which is innocuous as this. Well, clearly some, some parents don't feel it's innocuous <coughs> at all. Uh, the woman there in the white shirt. Um, to suggest that there has to be an age at which you talk about such things as relationships, same-sex relationships, suggests that there's something wrong with it, mm. which is purely discriminatory in itself. Uh, yes, the woman there in the blue T-shirt with her hand up, yeah. Five-year-old child. She has a friend in her class at school who have same-sex parents. Um, all the children in that class think it's normal. All the children are happy with the situation. I don't think that it is as big an issue as it is being made out to be by the media. I think it is. I mean, I don't know if the media are overstating it or not, but nonetheless, parents have protested and the schools have suspended something called the No Outsiders Project uh, for some time. Is there anyone who, who disagrees with, uh, with it? Uh, yes. Rather bravely, I must say, you're the only person putting your hand up. Um, I, I disagree with having five-year-olds being taught this in school. And I think Damien's whole um, opinion was based on children being taught in a safe place by teachers um, because they may pick things up on the internet why is their home not a sanctuary? Why are their parents not being trusted to educate their own children? Um, I, can I, I just yeah. gonna, I just take one more from the audience and I'll come to the rest of the panel. Yes. Yes, you there. I think I go one step further about whether it's moral or not. I think it's irresponsible not to be teaching it to five-year-olds or any age group for that matter. Because if children, as you've already said, they may have same-sex parents themselves, same-sex rela relations, friends, whatever. And so children need to be, feel safe and comfortable wherever they are, in the home, the school, wherever they are. And that's part of their security, knowing that the people they love and who love them are loved unconditionally, irrespective of their sexuality. Reasonably brief, if you would, Simon Wilson. Um, so, I mean, the question is, is it morally right? And I, as a parent, I've taken the decision that it, absolutely it is morally right to tell my children about that. And when my cousin comes to stay with her wife, I, I explain to my kids that, you know, Elle has two mums and that's absolutely fine. They are... Um, they don't regard anything unusual about it. And I, I celebrate the fact that... Um, people who maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago, if they made certain life decisions, would could not have the joy of parenthood, which is one of the greatest joys in my life. And I think we should, rather than focus on this sort of relatively small problem in, in one school, I think we should focus on the fact that just how much progress we have made and how many more people can enjoy being parents and having a relationship with children. I think it's a wonderful thing. We should focus on that. We've just got a very few minutes left, I'm afraid. And Merrin? Um, I, I don't think it's immoral. I think it's absolutely right that everyone should learn these things. There's one point that I would make about it is that I actually went to a um, sex education presentation at one of my children's schools the other day, and it was absolutely fascinating. And all I could think was, God, I wish someone had told me this when I was mm. 10. And I had some sense of how sexuality worked and how it worked both physically and emotionally and about, about the relationship. So I do think we've made enormous progress. And the other very important thing about this type of education all the way through is pornography. 
You know, I saw a, a statistic the other day, 53% of boys think that pornography is a reasonable representation of sex. Now, we have to teach them that that's not true somewhere and somehow. And if we can do that in school, all the better. Yanis. I'm, I'm very gratified that this consensus of tolerance, uh, uh, which would be absolutely, utterly absent 20 years ago, is yeah. now with us. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy to be in the midst of all of you with these views. Uh, I just want to share my own uh, experience with my daughter, who is growing up in Sydney, Australia. Um, she, when she was 10, she told me about uh, a kind of strike action that the students put together in support of what she called, I had never heard of that, that, that term, she inst educated me, uh, her gender neutral friend who was demanding that she should have access at the age of 10 to a toilet that was either male or female and all the kids got together and demanded of teachers that uh, a toilet should be prepared for this child. Now, I think this, this movement towards increasing toleration is something that needs to be celebrated. Okay. I've just got time for just a couple of very quick comments from the audience. Yes, the, the, the woman there with the, with the green hair. <laughs> um, I think it's a really good thing that we are opening up the conversation. And like Damien mentioned, that there are people out there who are in school age who are struggling with mental health issues. Opening up the conversation about LGBT relationships and making it so that it is taught in schools. I'm not going to go into age because it's whatever that a parent deems appropriate. Um, opening up that conversation is going to help so many more kids who are struggling and who are up with their own identity and trying to figure out who they are. Well, thank you very much. That was an unusual outbreak of consensus and and warmth here in the question. It's when we get off Brexit, uh, somehow that seems to happen. It won't last, it won't last. It won't last says Yanis. <laughs>